And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we now have the dialogue moving up and down with the arrow staying in the exact same position each time for a more conventional dialogue. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Decryption. I hope you're well. I've had a request on Discord from Douglas to recreate the conventional dialogue that most games have, where as you move up and down, the selector symbol moves with the dialogue rather than the dialogue moving. So you can see in narratives example, you can walk up and start some dialogue and you'll see as I move up and down, the dialogue will move up and down, but the arrow will stay in the middle. Now, some games do work like this and for long lists, this is the ideal way to go. But in some cases, people just prefer the dialogue staying in the same place and the selection arrow moves up and down. And after a little bit of work, I cracked it. So I'm going to show you how to do it today. So in order to crack this, most of our work is actually in modifying Narrative's default UI, and it's really easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control Space to open up my content browser, and I'm gonna come down to my plugins folder here where I have Narrative installed. If you can't see this, just make sure you hit settings and, and make sure you have show plugin content ticked. If you've installed it to engine level, just make sure you've got show engine content ticked. Then I'm gonna jump into Narrative 3 content, and I'm going to go into narrative UI and widget and the two widgets we need here narrative default UI and dialogue option are here alternatively you can press ctrl or command p and just search for default narrative UI here we go and I'm going to open up the default UI and I'm also going to open up the dialogue option so the default UI is how it covers most of what narrative does it's got the quests it's got the main notifications which aren't currently used and the task and dialogue system the dialogue option is the selectable options to play clip so in order to achieve this effect firstly what we need to do is we need to give this dialogue option the option to show a selected arrow so you can do anything you want to it so in my case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the text here and I'm gonna add in a horizontal box like so and I'm gonna paste in the text just like normal on the horizontal box I'm just gonna make it full width and full height so it takes up the same and the reply text can just remain the same and I'll just and the reply box I'm just gonna tick fill so it takes up the remaining space and tick fill horizontally next I'm gonna come back to the narrative default UI and I'm gonna take this little arrow here it's called the selector arrow icon and I'm just going to copy it and in the dialogue option I'm just going to come into the horizontal box and paste and I'm just going to drag it up so it's before the reply text and then you'll notice it's a bit out of line with the boxes so I'm just going to set the padding to zero and it should resolve that nicely so you can add some padding if you want to give it a little bit of a gap but if I come to this text and just type test you can see there's plenty of space between it if your text isn't center aligned properly just come and remove the padding from it and then it will be center aligned perfectly like that next I'm going to select the selector icon and I'm I'm just going to set the visibility to hidden not collapsed collapsed will mean it won't take up any space when it's hidden meaning your dialogue will go backwards and forwards as you select up and down if you want that effect set it to collapsed I'm going to retain it as hidden so the text always stays there and the selector icon always takes up the space even though it's not being rendered because that's the effect I want. Next I'm going to jump into the graph and I'm going to add a new function called set selection. I'm going to click the function and I'm just going to add an input of a boolean and I'm going to call it selected and this is the bool we're going to pass to it so every time we call this function we can say this option is selected this option isn't selected and I'm going to add a branch straight away and just connect up to it and now with this function you can really customize it however you one if you want the text to change color when it's selected if you want to move it along do some wiggly animation effect across the text this is where you do it so all I'm going to do for mine just to be basic is I'm going to drag in the selector icon and I'm just going to set the visibility to visible I'm going to drag it into the true and I'm just going to set it to visible and then if it's false it means it's not selected so I'm just going to come and set it back to hidden and remember if you want it to not take space up set it back to color and then like I say carry on from here make it visible change the color make it bold do anything you want for me this is just good enough for now I'm going to compile and save and this is all we need to do to this dialogue option so we're now done with that the next step is in that default narrative UI and this is where we need to start adjusting it ever so slightly to make it work so I'm going to go into the default narrative UI the graph and I'm going to jump into the dialogue event graph here if you can't see it then it'll just be in the graphs event graph dialogue here so we don't need to actually change a lot of what's going off in narrative so the first part we're going to do is we need to find where narrative actually spawns dialogue options in the first place and if you come down to the event on dialogue replies available this is where it sets up the player replies 
and in a for each loop near the end it will spawn the dialog options. So what we need to do in order to make this the best we can is we need to tidy up a little bit so we've got some more room. So I'm just going to move this add child to vertical box all the way across a little bit and then where this create dialog option widget is I'm going to promote the return value to a variable because then we can store each option and I'm just going to call this player dialog options. Then I'm going to delete this set node and you'll see it's automatically set it up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click BP dialog option and it will convert it to an array. Alternatively, you can click it and just change it to an array here. And now what we can do is we can drag this out and we can drag up and say add like so. We can connect it up in the middle and we can connect the return value into it like so. And then with a little bit of formatting, you can make it look a bit neater. Don't forget to expand your comments. There we go. So now that we come in and we create each dialogue option, we're now storing it for later use. So because we're storing it, we also need to clear it out. So I'm going to come back to the beginning and just after we get the player replacement, here I'm going to drag in our player dialogue options and I'm just going to call clear because you need to make sure you clear it otherwise you're going to have old deleted ones and a lot of nulls and you'll get a lot of errors perfect so in the middle of this function you'll see you have the selector icon and you're setting its visibility now because we're moving where we want the selector icon to be we don't need this anymore so we can delete it off and just reconnect to true like so I'm going to tidy this up by dragging some things across because we need to access the completed function there we go so now that we have the player dialog options here, the first thing we want to do is when it's completed, as we want to tell narrative, the first option is the selected one. And that's really easy to do. So we can drag off from this player dialog options here and we can just do get to get the first option. If we drag off this and just say is valid and pick the question mark one, we can connect this to the completed. And now from the get, we can drag straight across and we can do set selected. We can do set selection, which is our new function. And we can just plug it into the is valid. And here here, because it's the first one I'm just gonna tick it like so and we can now compile and save so that's the first part of our mod done we now render the dialog options and save it into a variable the next is as we move up and down we need to change this set selection and we need to hide all the others and that's really easy to do so if you come down you'll see an event called scroll forward and scroll back and this is how you go up and down and thankfully with narrative we don't need to modify this because it all calls the same function of set player reply so we can skip that to the set play reply function here and it's going to give us a little bit of room and you'll see this is the code that narrative uses in order to move the, the scroll up and down of the dialogue options so we can actually come and grab nearly all of this here back to the find and just delete it all because we don't need it anymore and instead what i'm going to do from the play replies i'm just going to drag it up i'm going to drag off and get a is valid index and plug in our finds index and this will tell us whether or not it's got a play reply option to do it or if the player is just just pressing up and down when they've got no options so this will circumvent that if it is a valid index so what we can do is we can drag in our player dialog options and we can come off and do a get and because these two variables are set up in the same sequence we can drag the finds index into our get there and this will get the current dialog option that is our current player reply it's a nice little loop we can connect to and then from this dialog object here we can drag off and we can do set selection and we can just come in and simply tick it and this means that it's going to get our current option and set it that it is our current one but we need to go and tell every other dialogue option that they're no longer selected and that's easy to do as well we can just drag off from the play reply options here and we can do for each loop and connect it to the true not the false and then from each one we can just do set selection again and we can just keep it unticked so this loop is going to go through all of our player dialogue options that we've spawned and unselect them all and then when it's completed we're going to connect that up to there. It's going to come and set the current selected play reply to selected. So the final thing we need to do is when you actually select a reply, okay, you click on it or press enter, it comes up here and it currently hides the selector icon. Now, depending on what functionality you want, you may or may not want this. So if you want the arrow to remain on the one you've selected, you can just delete this off and connect it up like so, and then you're good to go. But in my case, I want the selection arrows to be invisible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back down and find my for each loop here where I make everything invisible and I'm just going to come back up and I'm going to paste this for loop in here and I'll have to do a little bit of tidying up so from the lock UI I'll plug it into my new for each loop and from the completed I'll plug it into the other for each loop so this is going to come in when we select a reply it will select the current dialogue option to go off and do whatever narrative needs to do and then it will loop through all of our options and make them all unselected so all the arrows disappear and it's going to loop through and just make all of the arrows invisible and then it will loop through one more time 
and then it'll do whatever narrative needs to do to hide the other options. One last little bug fix we need to do is when you set your player reply, the part that actually sets the one that you want to invisible as you're going up and down, on this get here, sometimes it's coming into this function when the play reply exists, but we've not yet spawned the dialogue options. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but we can just drag off from this get and just do another is valid with the question mark and then connect the valid to the set selection and the exec to the completed. This will just mean that if the dialogue options haven't been created yet, it's completely fine. I think there's just some logic flaw somewhere where it calls set play reply before we've actually spawned the dialogue options, which is completely fine. The only other efficient change we're going to do is back up here where we loop through the player dialogue options here you'll see that the for each loop afterwards comes in to get all the children casts it to the dialogue option then runs what it needs to which we don't need it to do that because we've already got that loop just above and it's already casted so what you can do is come and just delete this here and then simply drag in your set selection to the branch like so move all this back up everywhere you see a missing part you can just drag the array element in like so to connect our spawned dialogue options to the ones that it requires like so and the final thing we can do is we can come back to the designer and where our selector icon is we can just delete it out because we don't need it anymore if you get an error that it's still in use just delete it and then go back to your graph and find where it's in use and just make sure we've patched it up and now if you compile and save And we come back to the main player you'll see as we run up it will start we can move up and down and we can just press enter and it will select it perfect and that ladies and gentlemen is a really easy way to you can mod narratives ui to add a more traditional up and down movement to your dialogue i hope you enjoyed it ladies and gentlemen if you have any other requests that you would like to see please leave a comment below please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time